What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with a Golden Age comic book crack, clean, press, and resubmit video for Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years' experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Our CPR candidate is a copy of All American Comics number 83 from 1947, graded by CGC as a 5.0 with white pages. All American Comics was the flagship anthology series of All American Comics, Inc., one of the comic book publishers allied with Detective Comics and National Comics that were marketed together during the Golden Age under the Detective Comics bullet logo that eventually came to represent the company we know today as DC Comics. In Episode 1, we discuss the historical importance of All American Comics and how the title includes the first appearances of no less than three of the members of the Justice Society of America, Green Lantern, The Atom, and Dr. Midnight. Although issue number 83 is not a key issue, it is a Golden Age issue of an important DC title and does include a 12-page Green Lantern story written by John Broom with art by Paul Reinman, as well as a 7-page Dr. Midnight story drawn by Stan Ash. We also discussed how All-American Comics number 83 has only 12 universal copies in the CGC census and how, at 5.0, our copy is mid-pack in the census with 7 copies graded higher, but that if we can stretch the grade to a 6.5, we would be at the edge of the top quartile with only 4 graded higher. I paid only $189 plus shipping and taxes for this great Golden Age gem, and the grading and encapsulation fees will be a little less than $40 since we'll be submitting it with other comics in the vintage tier and taking advantage of our elite CGC discount. So we decided to crack this baby out of the holder so we could perform some CCPR on it. I created a playlist for this short video series, so if you want to watch episode 1 before watching this video, just click on the link in the upper right hand corner. All right, let's get to work removing this pencil. So I have my Pentel Click Eraser, which is my main weapon for dry cleaning. It's cut at a slight angle. And I'm just going to start gently on these white areas, erasing this pencil. Now this isn't like normal pencil writing where you just have some words written. This pencil was actually used to fill entire space in. So there's quite a heavy deposit of pencil. I'll call it lead, but actually, I guess today's pencils actually have graphite in them. I don't know if this is an old pencil and it was actually lead versus graphite. Who knows? But at any rate, I'll continue to call it the pencil lead. You see there's some buildup on the eraser. And what you want to do is clear that. I just use the surface of my hobby mat, which works quite nicely to restore your eraser to nice, clean, brilliant white. This is a PVC eraser, as all white erasers are. The Pentel is a little bit on the rubbery side. It crumbles quite nicely, but it also is a little grabby. I'm checking now the cover gloss. This book, as you can see, doesn't have a whole bunch of cover gloss. I'm just looking to see if my erasing disrupts the cover gloss, and it looks like it doesn't. So let's test a tiny yellow spot. See that? I've lifted yellow immediately. I don't love that. So I think we're going to deal with yellow a little later. Let's focus on all the white areas first, and then deal with the yellow. Traditionally, in dry cleaning, they say you can't use a white eraser on ink areas, particularly yellow and red, which are known as inks that lift quite easily. And I don't know why it is that some ink colors lift more readily than others, but it is, in my experience, true, and it's also, like I said, widely accepted within dry cleaning circles that you ought to be very careful around yellow and red because they lift quite easily. So for the moment, let's focus on the white 
and let's just get these letters cleaned up. I think they're going to give us a dramatic effect anyway, even if we can't get the pencil out of the yellow areas. But we have a few tricks and some different techniques to try. But let's get the, the lettering cleaned up first. So I'm going to try to stay inside the letters, which means I want to keep a pretty sharp point on my eraser here. And also, I'll be changing the angle of the book quite a bit so that I can see where the edge of the eraser is and ensure that I'm inside the line. Now, black ink is a little bit more tolerant of erasing with a white PVC eraser. And in fact, if you've ever seen lead from a pencil in raking light, you know that it leaves kind of a shiny surface behind. And again, I'm going to continue to generically say lead. I don't know if it's graphite or lead. But that shininess over the black ink is actually visible. And so I want to actually erase a little bit on the black ink because I want to remove the pencil lead that is laid over the top of the black ink. So I am dancing right up on the edge of the colored inks here. I'm getting the white area and I'm gently getting the areas of the black outline of the letters here. I absolutely love this font that they chose for the comics in All American Comics. Really is a nice old timey font. I should make that the official font of Liberty Hill Comics, I think. So I th think this is a good time to discuss ergonomics when you're dry cleaning. You can spend literally hours doing this, and sometimes we do. Make sure you take care of yourself. You don't want to have chronic back pain or neck problems, or even wrist for that matter. So my workspace is very important to set up feet flat on the ground, back straight, good support. I'm going to just tighten up this tip by cutting with a scalpel the end of the eraser to keep it nice and tight and clean. You'll note that it's important to keep breathing to keep your arms resting on the table and toward that end I use a ring light and there's a link to it in the description of the, the exact ring light that I use. It has a big 10x magnifying glass and a ring of LEDs around the outside. That keeps my space nice and bright and keeps my ability to see everything really well without crooking my neck and straining over the book. I had a fight with some trees yesterday. I, I hung a owl nesting box, so wish me luck on that. But if you notice any cuts, nicks, scratches, <laughs> or other little boo-boos on my hands, that's because I was working in the yard yesterday. All right, so we're getting there. Like I said, just getting these letters cleaned up I think is going to have a dramatic effect on the presentation here. Doing this with magnification, one of the things I noticed is that the yellow ink is just, just barely slightly off register here. So there's a little bit of a shadow, if you will, or a glow effect of the yellow inside the letters. I'm largely ignoring that because my erasing will lighten it up a little bit, but it'll still be there. And I don't think it's that important. It's kind of interesting though. So Having the tip cut like this is a trick that I picked up from Kenny Sanderson, one of the luminaries in the comic book restoration and conservation world. He does not have a YouTube channel, but he's over on Instagram, 
easily easy to find. Definitely recommend you follow him. He actually has my all-star number three at the moment, which I'll tell the tale when the story's complete, but went to CGC for a crossover and ended up farmed out to Kenny Sanderson from CGC to do some work. So I'm actually very excited to see what he does with that book. It's nice to have professionals work on your some of your books, even when you do a lot of work on books yourself. It's just nice to collaborate with people sometimes, and I'm going to actually probably do more of it here in 2024. So look for that hopefully soon. And I'll definitely update everybody on the All-Star 3, like I said, when I have something to update. Right here you can see that that lead is in the white area. It's over the that little blue area. It's over the black ink as well, and then obviously spills over into the yellow. This odd little circle of pencil lead looked like it was really dug in deep. I'm going to switch to my STL eraser, which is 3.8 millimeter in diameter to get between these letters. And this is still too large, so I'm going to switch to my mono zero eraser. This one is only 2.3 millimeters in diameter to get in between the arms of the S here and between the S and the dash. Apologize, I know you don't have a great view of that, but that angle was necessary for me to get in there and clean it up. So whoever originally colored this circle in this dialog box with a pencil must have really went to town with the pencil in a circular fashion. There's a small abrasion there where the paper's actually damaged. So I don't want to get into it any more than I already have. I think it's difficult to notice because it's in a white area, but technically the paper's actually damaged right there. There's also some stains in that dialog box. I gently went over them with the eraser. They are not amenable to a dry clean. And I really don't want to go into a wet clean on this book, so I think we're going to live with them. Really want to keep this grade universal and with only 12 copies in the census, I think there's no sense tempting the fates and ending up with a conserved or even worse, a restored copy. Not for that tiny amount of staining there and not given the other faults that this book already has that are going to hold the technical grade back. All right, I think we've put off these yellow areas about as long as we can. I'm going to test again just a little bit to see how tolerant this yellow is. I know we're lifting a little bit. That's a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. But I can't quite see yet on the page where the yellow's lifting. I think you can see there from the camera. I think I'm going to try this Mars eraser. This is also white PVC, but it is a little bit harder. It's a less crumbly and less grabby, less rubbery. Speaking of Kenny Sanderson, this is the white eraser he prefers for Golden Age books. And it's lifting the pencil lead, and it does not seem to be lifting quite as much of the yellow ink as my Pentel Click Eraser did. So I think this is going to be a slightly better eraser for this yellow area. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the rest of the yellow with this Mars Stadler white eraser. Now this is very delicate work. Notice how I'm holding the eraser, you know, pretty far back. 
that ensures that I can't put very much force into what I'm doing. In addition to the dark lines, there are some very light pencil lines. You can see some longish ones that go from the bottom of the A over to like the four. And we'll want to clean those up as well. So I'll probably leave the 15 and the four for last, somebody's little subtraction problem or whatever it was there, because those are probably gonna be the most difficult. They're probably gonna be the most indented and darkest of these solitary lines that are in the yellow. And I'm gonna work the rest of this yellow area and again, continuously checking my eraser. I really don't want an area in this yellow, and I'll test it in the red. Look, immediately lifts red. See the red on the eraser from that, just barely touching it. You have to be very careful with these colors. I really don't want to leave, as I was saying, an area with lighter yellow where you basically can tell that it's been erased. You can tell that there was a darker line and it was erased away. It looks better than having the pencil mark, but to be perfectly frank, it still looks bad. So I want to avoid that. And I'm, I think we can probably accomplish it with this Mars eraser. So here you can see these are light pencil marks, so they require an even lighter touch, really barely touching the paper. As I've said before, if you're clearing the eraser mark with one pass, you're probably pushing too hard, right? So here you can see I'm just very gently brushing the eraser over these areas, and that's all that's required that and some patience and of course occasionally clearing the graphite or lead from your eraser that's all that's required to clean these these areas up so this is progressing quite nicely i'm really pleased because again traditional dry cleaning says you can't do this essentially uh, we know that you can and we know that it's different with Golden Age books than it is with silver or bronze or certainly modern. But we also know that a lot of it is technique dependent. So I do not advise you to do this your first time out. I do not advise you to do this if you don't have a lot of practice. And I don't advise you to do this if you're in a hurry, generally don't have patience, are not a detail-oriented person or are not somebody who has some humility who's going to check their eraser often to make sure they're not lifting. Confidence is actually sometimes a killer in comic book conservation because if you've done something many times, you think, oh, this, you know, this is old hat. You just jump into it. I always want to proceed with caution because... These books are treasures, even if, you know, in this particular case, this one doesn't have a, a lot of monetary value, but it's a near 80-year-old book with white pages from an important run. It does have a Golden Age Green Lantern story. It does have also a Golden Age Dr. Midnight story. I definitely don't want to be the one who damaged this book. So I'm proceeding with extreme caution. But look how nice and bright the inks are. And look how much better this title looks without all of that pencil marking. All right, time to get after what I think will be the most difficult thing to do here, and that is to remove these numbers that have been written here when somebody was practicing their math homework. I'm going to proceed again with extreme caution nice and easy and with these the pencil actually leaves an indentation 
So you want to use circular motion or a combination of motions that go with the different lines of the pencil marking or both as you see here. So you can notice that I'm kind of attacking this from a whole bunch of different directions. But that seemed to work pretty well. I don't think we have... I'm going to try to get this pencil out of this light blue sliver, but it lifts the blue almost immediately. I can definitely erase it off the black and leave less of a shiny pencil lead area in the black ink. But I don't think it's worth trying to lift the pencil out of that tiny sliver of blue. We're going to lighten it up, and it may even be noticeable there just because it's such a tight, dark space. All right. I think we got the bulk of our work done. We got the bulk of the improvement behind us already. Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to just see if there are any other areas within this yellow where I could very gently touch it just to lift a little bit of soiling. I don't think there's going to be much. We knew this was, other than the pencil writing, a pretty clean book all in all. does not have a lot of surface soiling or contamination. A couple areas here in this yellow field. Look how nice and bright we kept the yellow. Look how we don't have obvious eraser marks. Now I can see it just a little bit better than the camera picks it up. There's a few barely perceptible light areas in the yellow where if you're really focused on it, you can tell it's slightly lighter than the area around it. So one of the tools I like to use to minimize those differences and kind of smooth them out so your eye isn't drawn to them is a kneadable eraser. Now this kneadable eraser I'm pretty sure is going to lift this yellow pretty readily. The lighter yellow it's not quite as obvious and I think you can tell there but in this upper field where we have yellow I think it's going to lift the ink but it's going to lift it in such a way that it's barely going to lift any ink and it's going to actually smooth out the difference between the areas that we erased with the pencil and those that we didn't and I'm going to barely drag it across here and I'm going to check it very regularly you can see it picked up some red and some black but it did its job and even with some magnification now, when I look at this, there's really no perceptible difference between the areas where I had pencil that I erased and the areas that I didn't erase. So I'm very pleased with the outcome here. We'll, we'll look at some stills later so you can see it at the level I am. I'm going to check the spine just to make sure it doesn't need any dry cleaning. I think it's best to just leave it alone. This back really isn't very dirty it has a little bit of dirt along this edge which is very common because kids don't always wash their hands before they read their comic books so i'm just gonna get this thin gutter dry cleaned and i can see that there's a noticeable difference when i'm passing the eraser not quite as obvious probably on camera and then i'm just gonna touch the white areas, brighten them up just a little bit. There's a little bit of dirt in the brim of this hat that I think is noticeable and we're able to remove that which is great. Really nothing to speak of in the rest of these white areas but I'll just give them a quick touch just to see if I can't brighten them up a little bit. We got the worst behind us, and I'm really pleased with the outcome on that logo. I think it's going to make a pretty dramatic difference. The only other major flaw we have, of course, is obvious right now. It's that rolled spine. Between the rolled spine and the pencil marks, 
Let's go over this with a cotton round. You can see even a cotton round will lift some of this ink. These inks in the golden age were often laid on very heavy and just literally brushing them with a cotton round. The cotton round will pick up dirt, but it'll also start to lift this ink if you're not really gentle. Now, just like when you polish an old car that has sort of oxidized paint, sometimes removing the top layer a few microns actually improves the appearance. So I don't mind lifting a little bit of this ink. The ink that's on top is a little bit oxidized, just again, having been there over 75 years now. So I find that removing just a little bit of it tends to brighten the colors up a little bit. You don't want to do too much of it. You don't want to smear it around too much, but that's why you see me just constantly checking my cotton round here. And I, there's something that I feel there, so I pushed a little bit more, but look, immediately lifted some red from... Is that the Red Riders jacket? I lifted red from the Red Rider. All right, I'm not going to do any more than that. And I think it looks great. Again, we have this spine roll to deal with still. But this book is ready for the humidity chamber, and we'll deal with the spine roll next episode. Let's check out the side-by-side -side here. Now, on the left is the before. On the right is the after, obviously. And what a difference a little bit of dry cleaning made on this book. And again, the red looks darker, deeper, and more intense. We accomplished what most dry cleaners would say you can't do, and I'm thrilled with this outcome. So what's next? I'm going to put this comic book in my humidity chamber overnight, and next episode we'll remove the spine roll and give it a final press and review our progress, and then it'll be off to CGC. As long as we don't run into any trouble refolding this comic book, I think our stretch goal of getting this book into the top quartile of the CGC census is still achievable. What do you think? Anyone else out there like to dry clean yellow and red ink and live to tell the tale? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.